that's something that uh, Mr. Kanat uh, alluded to, which is just that things work quite well in Germany, and there's a certain infrastructure uh, that you can count on, and just knowing that things are are done right um, without n not being too too hasty, and uh, that's probably something that. Um, helps in the branding of Germany as a country um, investment destination and, and the city itself. Um, is that part of, of your message uh, that you present to investors? Um, and is that, is that a core selling point of the city? It definitely is. Um, I mean, this is the German image. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, somebody in Shanghai just told me a couple of weeks ago there are only two words you can uh, promote Germany with. One is uh, four words, actually. One is made in Germany and the other is Frankfurt. So uh, what st does made in Germany stand for? Actually, uh, something that the, the Brits developed to, to protect themselves for them, from the cheap imports from Germany in the, in the late uh, 19th century, uh, which uh, apparently backfired to some extent because that is our trademark now and it stands for, for engineering uh, solutions, high engineering skills. And uh, therefore, uh, of course, we, we promote that and we make the links between those things that everybody knows, uh, our cars and, for instance, our stock exchange. Because uh, Lutz keeps telling me that the one big advantage of Frankfurt is, is uh, clearing and settlement. Mm -hmm. And that is, in the end, an engineering issue because it involves software and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, again, you find the same skills back in various parts of our, our economy and in the areas we are very strong at. And I think that's what we have to promote. But we have to, at the same time, tell people that we are very innovative and creative. Uh, very few people know that Mont Blanc is a German brand. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and uh, Gilles Zander and Boss and you know all of them they normally not really related uh, with a, with a German image so we bring them in as well and that's why we are so very proud that we have Crytek because that is a kind of creativity using the engineering skills in the end as well but with a incredible creativity and and uh, uh, with no limits you know that is I think something that's 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 very important for us. And are there any misperceptions related to that about Germany as an investment destination? Do you really want to talk about that? <laughs> 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 well, I think, you know, uh, we have to be honest. Uh, people uh, don't think that we have a lot of humor. Uh, they think that we can be very lively once we had a couple of beers. <laughs> but apart from that, we, uh, we are pretty dull and, and very serious people. And that's why the uh, Soccer World Championship was for us so very, very important because that really changed the, the, the image of Germany significantly. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember having, having young uh, uh, American and, and English students in my home, uh, uh, colleagues of my daughter uh, studying in the US, and they were absolutely flabbergasted. They say we never. We, the picture we've got from of, of Germany is completely different from what we see here, and I think this is something we have to get across mm -hmm. occasionally that we uh, we are not that dull. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, perception is definitely wrong outside of Germany. I'm fully convinced. Some of it is true, but uh, some of it is some perception is wrong. Um, it definitely is a high tech country. That again. Uh, you would expect it for cars and engineering, but not necessarily for software. If you uh, look at, well, at gaming is one example sitting here, but if you look at uh, the German stock exchange, for instance, this is real high tech, and this is software and hardware and nothing else. And it's the biggest uh, derivative exchange in the world, as far as I know, and uh, with a very high market capitalization. It's just purely technology, but it runs under a you know, different name. It's not a software company. Um, that's a good example of, of wrong perception, I would say, uh, in uh, Germany. And um, generally speaking, it is also a very competitive market for, in lots of industries. Um, that has been mentioned before. The competition means it's tough to win, but it also means uh, it's low cost. And it means you have advantages in purchasing, for instance. And specifically, I'd like to insist, Frankfurt is, in my view, not an expensive area to do business compared to the likes of London, Paris, even Madrid, not talking about New York, Shanghai, Hong Kong, etc. Uh, would, you, would you expect that? Would you, do you really have that perception? Probably not. 
Maybe I just want to add two things. One is your, your mentioning of the stock exchange. The German stock exchange was the only stock exchange up and running without any interruption when 9-11 happened. So all of a sudden, this was the only stock exchange in the world where you could trade. And it was traded, you could get your settlement, you could get your clearing, everything was done. And maybe on the, on the side of, uh, <coughs> is the city a happy city? Maybe it helps to look around. The city is surrounded within 45 minutes, wherever you go, car minutes, wherever you go, by wine growing areas. All the big, important, good wine growing areas are in and around Frankfurt. So that's well known, but maybe this kind of promotes the spirit of happiness. This leads to a very interesting issue, and that's something that I only realized uh, very recently. Uh, you know, we Germans love our woods, and we, we are surrounded by woods. Frankfurt has the largest inner city wood, I think, worldwide. I don't think that anybody else would do that, you know, but we Germans do it. And it's accessible. You can go there, you can bike, you can take the dog maybe at a leash, but you can do it. You can jog, you can mountain bike, whatever. And you can go through through the fields, wherever you are, you can, can use them. Uh, I always take the example of the US. If you want to do that in the US, you have to climb over a fence. If they shoot you from the front, it's self-defense. If they shoot you from the back, it's murder. The result is the same. So uh, this is very unique, you know. We have this little, as I said, this wood in the city and the council general just told me a couple of weeks ago, he lost the minister there. He was in the <laughs> hotel next to it, had breakfast and had time, and he walked into the wood. He couldn't find his way out because he'd never been in a wood like that, you know. And uh, so they had to get the police and with GPS they found him. <laughs> but uh, th this is something that is really special. You have the nature, you can do all these wonderful things. And I would like to add, add one other thing to the internationality because that really is for me the USP of, of, of our region because of the tradition of the trade fairs and all of that since since 1200 years uh, people are accustomed to foreigners and as, as Lutz said we have these 30 to 40 percent people coming from abroad living in the city now from all parts of the world and through all layers of the society we just have one large group from one part of the world that's very uh, important and then as Lutz said that we have a lot of Germans uh, especially in the management who have an international background all of us have an international background we all stayed somewhere else for a while we know how it is to be an expatriate and I think this is absolutely key and that, that adds to the to the international flavor of the city and that's an endorsement of the quality of life itself if you can attract international talent and 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 get German expats to come back home and to settle in in Frankfurt yeah, uh, to the perception issue uh, Toby I want to add um, from our industry, I can say the perception was there maybe five years ago. It's changed actually drastically with other with great content coming out of Germany. And in fact, and one of the biggest clusters in Germany is actually in the Frankfurt Rhine Main area. And the world's largest trade show in terms of uh, visitor size is actually happening in Germany too. Unfortunately, in Frankfurt, but very close to Frankfurt. So they fly into Frankfurt and use a train or whatever to Cologne. But that helped actually a lot to change the picture actually about Germany in our industry. And that's very important because it suddenly becomes an interesting country or interesting region where people from Los Angeles, people Shanghai or Vancouver want to relocate and want to work there because of... They have to come and see you for themselves. Yeah, but they all... When that, in, the few, in the past five, ten years ago, it wasn't even considered to go there and work there, mm -hmm. but it changed uh, because of content coming out of the country as well as how, uh, the, how uh, fame, popular it became through trade shows and people have spent time there and realized actually that's actually... Wow, that's actually pretty good. Nice. It's great, great. Uh, possibilities you have, forest, uh, culture, uh, everything. I mean, it's basically supports what you said. Some people, particularly people far away, they don't know Germany in the last five to ten years. Mm -hmm. World Championship did a lot of work actually here. People visit uh, Germany. Uh, were actually, they told me, I have never expected this. And similar things, uh, it's basically it's, it's progressing very well actually to our advantage. We have a very recent uh, proof for what we're saying, and it was just happening the over the last weekend. It was the, uh, the summit of the Art Directors Club in Germany. 3,000 invited members of 
uh, the uh, advertising and related activities. They came for the first time to Frankfurt after 16 years in Berlin. And we had been told that some of them uh, were a little bit reluctant, you know, thinking to come go to the banking city and all of that. And uh, they had more than 50% uh, more visitors than they ever had in Berlin. They were absolutely surprised about the support they were giving, uh, getting from the government. The mayor and the secretary of economics on the state as well as the federal level were there at the opening. They had never experienced that. And it was a huge success. And because of the advantages, short, short uh, distances in Frankfurt, it was not only happening at the Congress Center, but it was happening all over the city, even in adjacent cities. So, uh, it was really, it was a huge success and the, those people who had never been to Frankfurt were absolutely amazed. So is that a, a key part of the city's promotion plan to try to attract conventions, sporting events, um, other kind of international fora to get people to come into the city? Yeah, well we have a lot. We will have the, the female soccer world championship next year. Uh, we were, in, and that will be centered in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had, we, Played a, quite a big role in the in the other uh, soccer world championship. We have our uh, marathon. We have the Iron Man in Frankfurt, the real Iron Man, not the half version. <laughs> and uh, so you know, we go for the real thing. You know, <laughs> we have to do it right. Yes, we have to do it right, and we we are constantly trying to, to improve in that that sense. Maybe the European Championship will come back as well. We don't know. <laughs> is there yeah, we know. We'll, we'll, I mean, you know we're looking at things. Yeah. Brain, so maybe we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we mind you, we are the, the, the we have the third largest trade fair in, in in the world, and we have the the international car fair is the biggest in the world. The book fair is the biggest in the world. There is no other city in the world where where you meet annually so many intellectually uh, bright people, uh, Nobel laureates and all of that, than in the, this one week in Frankfurt. Yeah. We have in the field of, of uh, chemical engineering and, and biotech and these things, we have the Achima every third year, again the largest in the world. So there are a lot of things happening in the city. Uh, but we, you know, that we have, what is the saying, if you stop to get better, you stop to be good. <laughs> and we believe in that, so we're constantly working at it. Courtney, I like, I liked your word balanced, and I would like to come back to this because I think this is one of the big strengths of Frankfurt and the Frankfurt area. There's no single industry that's totally dominant in the city. Uh, so the financial center, it's a financial center for continental Europe. It's a gateway to the east, to Eastern Europe, but it's not dominating the city nor dominating the region. There are a lot of insurance companies, there are a lot of car companies, there are a lot of design companies, there are a lot of tech companies of all sorts. There's a huge biotech area in the industry, even so-called old industries like the chemical industry. Chemical Höchst was one of the big German chemical companies. They were taken over by Sanofi they reduced the size of their operations in Frankfurt quite significantly. Mm -hmm. Their former site was converted, with the help of the government, by the way, into a big industrial park. And this big industrial park is home of more than 100 companies mm -hmm. with more employees than Höchst ever employed in the region. Mm -hmm. And this then is backed up by infrastructure like, like the telecom and inter internet, backed up by the uh, transportation, which is not only the airport, it's also the waterways, it's also the railways, all big railway lines are crossing and meeting each other in Frankfurt. It's the big uh, highways. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff there, and, and this is all in a kind of reasonably balanced uh, uh, way and not dominated, as I said before, by anything. 